Hello, everybody. Welcome to this Sunday biology session. How is everybody? Uh, just give me a quick uh, emoji or um, a message just to confirm that you guys can, can hear me okay. <clears throat> Hi, Josh. Thanks for, thanks for confirming. So how is everybody this evening? Anybody been up to something interesting this weekend? Hi, Sora. Welcome back, Charity Tube. Glad to have you back too. Yeah, anyone been up to anything interesting or <clears throat> have any, any news? Revising for a mock. Yeah, that doesn't sound like the most fun, but important. Hi, Harry. Hi, Mohammed. Hi, Candy. <clears throat> Mohammed, you've also got mocks tomorrow. Interesting. Yeah, good luck, both of you. Uh, Holly, have you actually got COVID? That's unfortunate. Hopefully, you don't get symptoms too bad. Um, Bella, you've got some snow. Where, where do you live? I mean, it's freezing this weekend, isn't it, in England? So I imagine it is probably snowing up north. Or are you somewhere completely further away? <clears throat> hi, everyone else. Probably too many people to say hi to everyone individually now, but uh, hello, welcome all. Um, so yeah, if this is your first session, um, welcome to Snaprovise. We do these sessions every month on a Sunday. Um, if you're an old hand, um, welcome back. Um, yeah, today's session, we are looking at mostly at DNA. So we're going to look at the actual structure of a like nucleotides and just some sort of similarities and differences between DNA and RNA and in eukaryotes and prokaryotes, etc. <clears throat> oh, it's actually snowing a lot, a lot in the north. I don't think I've actually looked at any news this weekend. Um, so I haven't seen anything about that. <clears throat> so you're holding out for a, a potential snow day and then you won't have to do the, the mock, yeah? I mean, you're still gonna have to do it at some point. So I guess it's, you're just delaying it. But I guess if, yeah, if you need some more time to revise, that could be, could be kind of handy. Um, anyway, let's make a start. Uh, it's not snowing in London, that's all I know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if outside of the city. I know it's usually a bit warmer in the city, isn't it? Um, the urban, what's it called? Any geographers? I can't remember from A-level geography. Urban heat island, something like that. Um, that effect. Anyway, let me share my screen. So you should now hopefully be looking at PowerPoint. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think let's check YouTube. It looks, it looks all right uh, to me. Urban heat island effect. That's the one. Nice. Uh, presuming you're you're a geographer then, Ikra. Um, <clears throat> cool. Let's let's dive straight in. So a little bit about me quickly. Uh, just I'm the head of biology here at Snaprovise. Uh, I'm a biology teacher and tutor. I used to work in a sick form in London, but now doing uh, tutoring full time. Um, and a little bit about Snaprovise. So the reason we do these courses uh, once a month is to give you a taster of our website. So I'm going to walk you through the website at the end of the session. Um, so yeah, we'll see more, more on it later. But just to let you know, um, we're offering a, I guess it's kind of like a Black Friday. We should have actually called it Black Friday, made more of a big deal out of it. Uh, but an offer. Um, so it's a back to school 21 is the promo code. It expires in 48 hours. This will give you 25% off your first month. So yeah, feel free to, to try us out. Hopefully you'll be tempted after the, after the session. So this is, this is a learning pyramid. We normally start with a bit of revision of stuff we've been looking at recently and a little bit of, often it's like sort of groundwork. 
uh, for the session. I'm going to skip it today just because there's quite a lot of other stuff to get through. Um, yeah, but normally we would we would do that as a bit of a, a starter activity. <clears throat> so today we're going to look uh, at the different types of nucleotides and also polynucleotides. We're going to look at the structure of genes and chromosomes and sort of review some of the vocabulary that we need there and look at the genetic code and how to interpret those codon diagrams. Um, it is definitely pitched at sort of a revision pace. So if you haven't studied this before, this will be quite hard to follow along. By all means, um, do, do stick with it and do your best, but don't be discouraged if you're thinking this is like, this is really difficult. It, it is like a revision sort of lesson. <clears throat> So without further ado, these are the spec points. So um, you should all have a copy of your spec. If you don't, just download one. Just Google the name of your spec and then biology A-level um, specification and you can find it. But yeah, your teacher should have given this to you anyway. Um, this is relevant to all specs today. Also IB um, and even a lot of this actually would be helpful for GCSE, although we're going to more detail than you need. Is this being recorded? Uh, yes, yes it is. So your comments, I think the comments get recorded as well. I'm not 100%, but certainly the, the lesson is recorded. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> this, yeah, this is a year 12 topic, um, Lena, as you said. Um, nice. So yeah, we'll start with looking at polynucleotides. So there's a lot of different uh, places you might find nucleotides and sort of nucleic acids in the, in the body. Some examples are DNA and RNA. They're the two most famous, but then also ATP and ADP, uh, obviously what we use for sort of short-term energy uh, in all different metabolic processes in the, in the cell. Uh, cyclic AMP, you will have come across in year 13, um, yeah, which is another, another uh, type of nucleic acid we get in the, in the body. So all of these have a general structure, but there are some differences. Um, so we're gonna sort of look at some of the similarities and some of the differences now. So we're gonna fill in this table. What we wanna put in this first one is this first column, similarities between all nucleic acids. So this is things that they all have in common. Uh, and then we'll just do that one first, but you can be thinking about the next two. So in the next two, we're looking at differences between DNA, predominantly DNA really. Um, let's put, put that, RNA. DNA, RNA in prokaryotes. In fact, no, it's basically just DNA actually. Differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic DNA, and then also differences between DNA and RNA in general between all of these um, organisms. So <clears throat> you can delete comments, yeah, but it will show for a bit, I guess. Um, <clears throat> you do need to know about cyclic AMP for AQA, yeah, but not until year 13. So let's get some answers thrown out there. Um, A, C, and G bases, yes. Well, actually, that would be true for um, RNA and DNA, but if we're including ATP and ADP, that actually wouldn't be true. So going to take that one off because uh, ATP obviously only has um, an adenine base. Um, so all have nitrogenous bases. Yeah, we can say that definitely. And there's going to be some differences between that all have phosphodiester bonds, actually not quite, because again, if it's a single nucleotide like ATP, that's just a, uh, it's not a phosphodiester bond, 
it's just a we count that as just an ester bond. Um, they all have phosphate, yeah. And they all have a pentose sugar. Nice. And just to, as a refresher, a pentose sugar is a five carbon sugar. So pent meaning five. And O's, uh, O's just tells us that we're looking at a sugar. So like glucose, fructose, triose phosphate, they all end in OSE, a bit like how enzymes end in ASE. And that's how we know we're talking about an enzyme. Um, <clears throat> yes, DNA and RNA. So differences are DNA is double stranded, RNA is single stranded. Those aren't real acronyms, by the way. So you should definitely write out double stranded and single stranded. I'm just trying to fit it in that column. Um, yeah. DNA is longer. Than RNA, usually. Um, mm -hmm. So uracil in, oops, I hate to spell uracil. I can add an end of it. Uracil in RNA, thymine in DNA. Spot on. Um, yeah, so we, they, there are more things you could put for differences, but we've only got three spaces in that table, so that'll do for now. But I've seen some other good things like deoxyribose versus ribose for the pento sugar would be one. Um, yeah. Harry, yours is like, that's like differences in function, which we're, um, it doesn't actually specify what we're looking at. So yeah, that's, that is like, um, the, that's their functions and they're different. So I don't, there's quite a few answers. So I might've missed it. And so apologies if I have, but has anybody put anything to do with prokaryotes versus eukaryotes yet? Oh, yes, you've just said. DNA in prokaryotes is not in a membrane bound organelle. Yeah, yeah, so um, I guess that's like not directly a feature of the DNA. So maybe we won't put it on, but that's, that's true. Um, yes, histones, nice. Um, has histones in eukaryotes and it doesn't in prokaryotes. Um, yes, you have introns in eukaryotes, prokaryotes only uh, exons. Nice, and then linear versus circular. I say that's probably the other best one to put on there. So DNA in eukaryotes is linear, whereas in prokaryotes, it's circular. What that means is, because DNA is usually stored as kind of like a jumbled mess, but if you straightened it all out in a prokaryote, you would get this sort of big loop, so it's circular. In a eukaryote, if you straightened it all out, it would have a start and an end point, so it's, it's linear. <clears throat> Introns and extrons are um, sections of a gene, and only the exons actually give rise to the protein. So yeah, as Harry's saying, introns are non-coding sections of a gene. The exons are known as the coding sections. Yeah, Ikra, exactly. So the, the way to remember that is exons are expressed. That's a good way to remember it, EX, EX. Or you can think of introns as intruders, which you need to get rid of. Um, maybe a bit less scientific, that one. but. Uh, whichever way you need to, yeah, you just need to remember it. So whatever is helpful to do that. <clears throat> so yeah, this is like a strand 
Uh, well, I, I was thinking it was going to be RNA because it's single stranded, but actually, this is a single strand of DNA because it's got thymine bases. So this would pair up with another strand to form double stranded DNA. <clears throat> um, cool. Yeah, I think there's a bit of variation between the specs as to how much they teach the uh, introns and exons. I don't think ACR talk about splicing really at all, whereas AQA, that's something that they go into. Um, so if you don't talk about splicing, you probably don't really go into much detail on introns. I mean, to be honest, no one goes into that much detail on them, just that they have to be removed. Um, <clears throat> cool. So let's, oh, OCR yeah, does talk about splicing a bit. OK. Oh, yeah, maybe I'm thinking of, yeah, is it AQA? Only AQA does alternative splicing, and the other specs do. <clears throat> they just sort of <coughs> losing my voice. They briefly talk about um, splicing, but not in as much detail. Yeah, it's quite a nice word, isn't it? Splice, splicing. So let's talk a little bit about DNA replication. We were not doing a full lesson on it. Um, so DNA is replicated semi-conservatively. What that means is <clears throat> the double strands are separated and both strands as a template to form new strands. This works because of complementary base pairing. If you, if you separate the two strands, their complementary base pairs will match up with them. And um, yeah, you can use that to, to form it. Um, yeah, I'm hoping I haven't got the new, the new variant I certainly haven't been to South Africa recently, so um, unlikely, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, no, just, I get basically the whole winter, I have this. Uh, I think it's mostly from talking too much for doing tutoring. I, I sort of lose my voice the whole the whole time. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's a, a COVID thing. Template just means acting, oh, how do you define template? Uh, like you copy off a template. Um, so yeah, you use that as the thing to copy off. <clears throat> uh, yeah, you actually don't need that, Harry. Um, even DNA ligase you don't need. Um, certainly, we don't talk about primers at all. Um, yeah, it's not necessarily a bad thing that you've learned it, but I shouldn't, they shouldn't ask about that in the in the exam setting. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about, so I'm just refilling my tea. Um, let's talk a little bit about the enzymes that are involved in this. So we've got DNA helicase <clears throat> and DNA polymerase. What do they both do? And let's put DNA ligase just for the people who do that. What do these three things do? Yeah, <clears throat> so bricks, H bonds between complementary base pairs. Um, don't say that it just unwinds or unzips the strand. That usually won't get you a mark. You can say that in addition, but you can't just say that. So uh, yeah, you need to be talking about the breaking the hydrogen bonds to get the mark. <clears throat> and yeah, the DNA polymerase joins adjacent uh, nucleotides or no, I could probably reword that bit better actually. So 
forms phosphodiester bonds. And then we're going to loop that back here between adjacent nucleotides. And DNA ligase, yes, joins fragments or Okazaki fragments, if you want to be precise. Together, brackets on lagging strand. <clears throat> so we're not going to go into full detail on DNA replication today. And yeah, if you haven't heard the term Okazaki fragment, then don't worry about it. You, not all specs talk about it. So OCR definitely do. AQA definitely don't. I can't remember off the top of my head whether Edexcel do or don't. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So the lagging strand is the one that's synthesized in sections. And those sections are what, uh, uh, um, what we call Okazaki fragments. Um, so the leading strand is done continuously, the lagging strand is done in sections, and then those sections need to be joined together. <clears throat> so which is which? The leading strand is the one that goes from the three prime end to the five prime end. So this would be the, the leading strand in this case, and this would be the lagging strand. We call this out of interest, this is a replication fork. Fork. <clears throat> so this would be helicase. And these would both be DNA polymerases um, going here. So DNA polymerase can only go in the three prime to five prime direction. So it moves along the strand, three prime to five prime. Therefore, it synthesizes a strand five prime to three prime, because remember, DNA is always in an anti-parallel orientation. It, both strands run in the opposite directions. So if this is three prime, this must be five prime. Um, and on the other strand, the other strand is therefore running five prime to three prime. And we know that DNA polymerase only moves in the three prime to five prime direction. So this is a problem. It can't move like this. So what happens is the strand gets unwound a little bit, some excess, and then a DNA polymerase binds and it does it in the reverse direction that the DNA is being separated. So the helicase is moving this way. Uh, the leading strand is also moving this way, but the lagging strand is done in reverse. So this takes a little bit of time and you have to join them all together. There's more stages, basically more steps. So it's obviously gonna be slower. So we call that the lagging strand because it's slower than, than this one. So this is the one that's the sort of the, the rate determining one for the speed that this can happen. The leading strand is the one waiting for the lagging strand. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, hopefully that's good, all good. So like I said, it's a bit of a whistle stop talk because this, this class isn't really supposed to be just on DNA replication. Um, that's like another lesson that we have. Um, but yeah, any questions on that before we move on? Why is it going in opposite ways? It's just the way DNA uh, works. So we call it anti-parallel. Anti-parallel strands. One goes five prime to three prime. Then the other one will go five prime to three prime, like that. <clears throat> Ligase joins Okazaki fragments, or just the sections together on the lagging strand. So because that's done in, in little sections, they need to be joined together. And that's what Ligase does. <clears throat> we also come across Ligase in genetic engineering, because we use it to, to insert genes into um, organisms to genetically engineer them. So you, you come across it in that topic as well. 
gene engineering. <clears throat> yeah, well, as far as A-level is concerned, it's not used in the leading strand. It actually is, because you need to remove these things called primers. So technically, yes. As far as A-level is concerned, no. Um, which I know is a bit of an annoying answer. A lot of what we learn isn't necessarily the complete truth, just because it's you can keep going into more and more detail and it kind of, it's not really that beneficial. So we, we do a fair amount of the A-level syllabus is a little bit simplified, um, which is a bit frustrating. But yeah, you, to go into that much detail on everything, it would just be, you just need so much time. You need like years and years, hence why, even if you're like a, a, a doctor, you tend to only specialize in one very small bit of the, like the whole field. You can't, you can't be an expert on everything. Um, so yeah, we just, we gloss over some of the, the finer detail just because it's not that important. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, hopefully that is all good. I guess a quick, a quick show. Um, What's lagging? Hopefully not this um, this call, although sometimes it can be a bit slow. Um, the the lagging strand is the one that's synthesized um, in sections, so it's the slower one to be replicated, basically. Uh, Mohammed, yes. Oh no no. So all oh, right, your first part of your thing is. True, helicase breaks the hydrogen bonds, causing the strands to separate. But then DNA polymerase doesn't join the parent strand with the new strand. That just happens because the complementary base pairs will form hydrogen bonds by themselves. They don't need an enzyme to do that. What the, the DNA polymerase does is join together these phosphodiester bonds between <clears throat> the strands. These hydrogen bonds, they form just by themselves spontaneously. So helicase breaks them, they form by themselves, reform, and then polymerase joins the new strand together, basically. Um, cool, so yeah, seems like that is mostly okay for you guys, that's good. Um, let's do some, <clears throat> some past paper questions, basically, to, to test that out. So we've got three multiple choices. The first one is DNA and mRNA both what? What's the common feature? <clears throat> yeah, why doesn't a, a cytosine try and bond to another cytosine? Because they need to have oppositely charged. So they can form the same number um, so that it's two for um, A and T and three for G and C, but they can only, a G is only attracted to a, a C because they've got oppositely charged bits for those hydrogen bonds. Um, so if that makes sense. And yeah, everyone's saying D, which is correct. So well done. <clears throat> so next one, one advantage of DNA having Two complementary strands is what? Oh, you had these questions in your exam. Nice. And yeah, <clears throat> everyone's coming in with C, which is very good. Why is it not A for the first one? Because only R N. A has ribose. DNA, it's in the name. DNA stands for deoxyribose, oh, deoxyribonucleic acid. So DNA has deoxyribose, <clears throat> which is kind of what it sounds like. It's a ribose, but with one less oxygen than normal ribose. And then this final one. So if the DNA has 40% cytosine, 
how much adenine would it have and why? <clears throat> yeah. So getting mostly mostly A's there, which is um correct. So yeah, it would be A. Basically, the, these sort of questions are very common. Uh, they can be presented in slightly different ways, but yeah. If there's 40% cytosine, there must also be 40% guanine. Obviously, percentages are out of 100. So 100 minus 40 plus 40 equals 20. So we've got 20% left for A and T. And obviously, they're both going to be equal. So 20 divided by 2 equals 10% A plus 10% um, T. <clears throat> so the quicker way is just do 50 divided, sorry, 50 minus uh, 40, because um, one of the A's, A and G, and one of the, uh, sorry, one of the C's and G's plus one of the A's and T's will always equal 50% because it's always going to be half the molecule. Um, if asparagine is related to asparagus, is guanine related to iguanas? Um, I mean, they, will, they do have guanine in their DNA. So in that regard, yes, but nothing more uh, correlated than that, I don't believe. Um, <clears throat> I wonder, yeah, some, it wouldn't be for iguanas, some organisms that live at very high temperatures, so kind of like extreme bacteria, they would tend to have more G and C um, bases because of the three hydrogen bonds that makes the DNA a little bit more stable. So if they lived in very hot places, then actually maybe they would have a slightly higher guanine concentration, but yeah, not, not really. Um, <clears throat> cool. So yeah, we'll, we'll stay on topic. <laughs> um, so state three differences between the structure of DNA and the structure of RNA. So we kind of did this already, um, but yeah, just as a, a recap. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So single strand versus double strand. I'm just writing this very shorthand now. Speed it up. Deoxy versus ribose. And yeah, I mean versus uracil. Perfect. Uh, yeah, shorter versus longer would also be uh, valid as well. Um, nice. So yeah, hopefully that was all good. Um, and yeah, let's look at genes and chromosomes in a little bit more detail now. So this is a chromosome. Um, this is obviously DNA. So this is the double helix shape. Um, where it's curled up like this, it would actually be wrapped around histones a little bit like that. So um, let's label those. It actually wraps, a, his, a histone looks a little bit like a cylinder, a little cylinder, and the DNA wraps around it twice. Oh, the drawing's not very helpful. Um, anyway, it also doesn't really matter, but just out of interest. Um, so yeah, this chromosome would contain both introns and 
Excellent. Um, yeah, good question. Our chromosome is not X-shaped. Um, they are actually not. So the X shape indicates that it's been replicated. So whenever you've got an X, that means you've got two copies of the same chromosome. So we do that when the cell is dividing. So you need to have a, a, a second copy of the DNA to be able to divide the cell into two different cells because they, every cell in your body needs a complete copy of your DNA. I mean, I guess technically red blood cells don't have any DNA, but because of that, they don't live very long. Um, if you don't have any DNA, you can't do any protein synthesis. That's why we have DNA to be able to make proteins. So if you can't make any proteins, you can't repair yourself. So the average lifespan of a red blood cell is like around a week um, because they can't, they can't fix themselves, can't fix any problems. Every other cell in the body has a copy of DNA to make proteins. <clears throat> um, so yeah, when you get the X's, that's two identical copies, and we call these, or as anyone remember, what do we call the two identical copies of DNA when they are when the DNA has been replicated? Sister, yeah, and it's not homologous, so that's something we need to like talk about as well. So two identical copies are known as sister chromatids. Nice. Put brackets, identical copies. Of a chromosome. This is different to a homologous pair. So you have two copies of each chromosome. You get one from your mother, one from your father. Um, so we call those a homologous pair. Of chromosomes. So you see this one you call chromosome, this one you call chromatids. So sister chromatids are identical. Homologous pairs are not identical. You get one from your mother, one from your father. So homologous pairs have same genes at same loci. Um, let's write that word again. Same genes at same loci, but different alleles. And an allele is just a version of a gene. So yeah, they've got different versions of the genes. Whereas sister chromatids, same genes plus same alleles. Um, a chromosome is a pair of chromatids. Yes, so you still call this Technically, it's still just like one chromosome. You count the number of chromosomes by the number of centromeres. So there's one centromere here. And when you split it into um, during anaphase, when they get pulled apart, you can then refer to it as two separate chromosomes. But, and this is like a bit annoying, until they separate, if you're talking about the, the things getting pulled apart, you have to say chromatids, because while they're together, they're not counted as separate chromosomes. So the sister chromatids are separated. And then usually you're allowed to say, and the chromatids are pulled to opposite poles, but you could actually at that point start to refer to them as chromosomes again, which I think is what you're saying there, Jack. Um, yeah. Oh, and Sophie, you were asking about that as well. Yeah. Oh, is that why? I see. Jack was answering your, your question. Uh, yeah, what you said was, was true, Jack. Um, nice. So these would be genes. They have different alleles, as you can see, represented by the different colors. And uh, this is a, would be a loci or locus. Locus is like where a gene 
is located on a chromosome. Um, <clears throat> nice. So I think that is everything I wanted to go through on, on that. It's a lot of sort of just defining terminology in this lesson. So still confused on chromosome chromatid. That's understandable. It's something that causes a lot of confusion. So maybe let's do this. So you have, let's say for humans, we've got 23 pairs of chromosomes. So for chromosome one, you get one, one chromosome one from your mother. This would be maternal. You get one from your father, paternal. They are both the same type of chromosome. So they, they have the same genes in the same locations. Um, then, so we call these. Um, Lucy, I just saw your thing. I will get to that in a second. Um, so these are called homologous chromosomes. Now, if you want to replicate a cell, each cell needs to have end up with both sets of these. So what you do is you replicate them. This happens in interphase. You replicate it. And then in during prophase, they line up together um, like this. This one's also replicated. So these are now going to rub out this bit some space. These are sister chromatids. And these are also sister chromatids. So these are homologous chromosomes. And this and this and this and this are both sister chromatids. So these are identical. These Homologous chromosomes, non-identical. Same genes here. And then same alleles for a sister chromatid. Um, <clears throat> cool, and Lucy, the HbA1c test. I, to, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I haven't heard of it. Is this a, is this something you learn about for A level? If so, it's in a, in a spec that I'm not as familiar with. Or is this something you've learned about, through, um, something like outside, outside of school? <clears throat> but yeah, the average urethrocyte is. You'll get some that will live longer. But yeah, it's a matter of a few weeks. Um, generally, they get replaced quite quickly because they take a lot of abuse. Like they're flowing through your uh, blood continuously, and they're not supported. They're like sort of like other cells are supported by the cells next to them. If they're in a tissue, they're kind of all supporting each other. The red blood cells take a battering as they go around your body, so they they tend not to, to last very long. And you're actually you're making um, millions and millions of new ones every second. So there's a lot of there's a very high turnover rate. Of these. Um, anyway, also, yeah, let's go back to what we were looking at. So yeah, hopefully that is making making some sense. Um, so oh, just seen a few other questions. I think it wasn't loading for a little while. Yeah, we call the Y chromosome a Y because it's a little bit shorter. Yeah. And there's, so yeah, like men have fewer genes than women because one of their, um, their sex chromosome is slightly missing a section. And that's why we get differences in, yeah, sex linked inheritance, which we're not going to go into today because that's a whole nother, whole nother story. 
How many base pairs realistically have to differ for alleles to be different? It can literally be one base pair. So if, if you have a substitute mutation and one base is different, as long as it's not a silent mutation, which would mean because of the code being degenerate and you get multiple codons coding for the same amino acid. So if it's silent, that doesn't even count. I mean, is, technically it's a mutation, but it, it's going to be the same allele still because it codes for the same protein. Um, but yeah, if you have one that changes the a single amino acid, that still counts as a different allele. So yeah, you can have a very, very drastically different one or a very small difference. It's still a different allele. Um, <clears throat> Lucy. Oh, okay. Possibly that's because you've taken them outside of the body. So they tend, in fact, yeah, that, that'd be definitely what's going on because they get destroyed by the Kupfer cells in the liver as the blood is flowing through the liver. So they sort of screen the urethrocytes, any of them that look a bit damaged and they're like getting, uh, they're not looking so good anymore. They will engulf them through phagocytosis and break them down. So if, if you take them outside of the body, they won't be destroyed. So that's probably how that works. Um, and yeah, I didn't, yeah. That is that in the OCR spec then? Something that, yeah, I haven't heard about it. So uh, maybe it's something your teachers just taught you that isn't, isn't in it, but they thought it was interesting, um, which could be, could be the case. So yeah, let's do, how much time have we got? 10 minutes. Let's do some more questions and we'll see how we're doing after this, whether we can do the last bit as well. So in figure two, the chromosomes are arranged into homologous pairs. Not sure where figure two is, but let's say this is figure two. Maybe something like that. So what is a homologous pair? of chromosomes is what we just talked about. <clears throat> oh, fair enough, but there's a, oh, it could be something that used to be in the spec that isn't anymore. So like an old exam question would have it. That might explain why, if no one else has heard of it. Um, but yeah, not, I'm not sure really. So homologous, um, Two chromosomes with the same genes. That's all you need to say. If you wanted to add more detail, you could have but different alleles, but you don't actually need to put that. If you said the word allele here instead of gene, you wouldn't get the mark because that's defining a, like an identical copy, which would be a, um, a sister chromatid. So I think there's, I'm looking at the, the screen on YouTube. I think there's like a even bigger lag than normal. I think it's like almost 20 seconds behind, like when I say something, but when I'm, when I write something on the screen and when it actually comes up is like, Usually it's only about five seconds delayed. For some reason today, I think it's it's like really behind. So um, if what I'm saying isn't matching up with your comments, uh, that's why, because I think your comments come up straight away. And then I think my video is like about 20 seconds behind live. So it's a little bit, might be a little bit weird. Um, <clears throat> Jocelyn, you should definitely have come across alleles in your OCR textbook. Loki, you may not have come across. Um, yeah, and also Loki is the plural. Loki is um, plural for locus. Um, and maybe, yeah, to be honest, maybe you don't need it for AS, but you definitely will need it for A2 
So yeah, it's a it's a word that's worth learning. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> I read it like the the god the god way, not not Loki from Marvel, or also from um, Norse mythology, with a with a C exactly. <clears throat> um, cool. Oh, this is very. This is very distracting with it being so so behind. Um, it still hasn't. What what I'm looking at the screen. I still haven't even written the bit on the top. Which I don't know why it's so laggy today. Anyway, well, hopefully, it still is making making some sense. So, um, next question: To observe chromosomes, they are often stained. The dark stain is used on the chromosome. Uh, binds to some areas of the chromosome more than others, giving the chromosome a striped appearance. So when we look at chromosomes, we need to stain them. We can use something like toluidine blue to stain them. Uh, tol how do you spell that? Tolu I think something like that. That is one stain you can use to stain DNA. There are other stains which are um, which are also useful. So, um, yeah, chromosomes have this stripy appearance. So kind of like how it looks here. Why, why is that? Or so this is a suggest question. These questions are kind of, it's not stuff you would have learned about, but it's something you have to use your like common sense slash biological reasoning to, to explain. So suggest one way the structure of a chromosome could differ resulting in the stain binding more in some areas. Um, <clears throat> so is it not behind for you? Yeah. I think, yeah, it must be the delay of like it uploading to YouTube, but it's, yeah, it's much more than normal today. Um, Yes. So it could be because introns, exons, staining differently. It could be different base sequences. It could be uh, some more or less tightly coiled. Those would all be suitable, suitable answers. Um, nice. So put bullet points just to show. You obviously don't, you only need to put one of those, not all three. Um, <clears throat> so let's complete this table. So we've got DNA, messenger RNA, and tRNA, AKA transfer RNA. Um, so we need to go whether hydrogen bonds are present and how many strands are present going down? So what are we thinking? <clears throat> so hydrogen bonds present for DNA, yep. For messenger RNA, nope. For tRNA, they actually are. So because tRNA has this, it's called a clover leaf shape because it looks a little bit like a clover, not really that much, but we still call it that. There's, um, it's single stranded, but that single strand folds back around on itself. So you get hydrogen bonding. So that's a tRNA. So it's one, uh, sorry, no. It's two, then both one, one. Yeah. Um, nice. So I think that's, yeah, the same as what most of you, maybe even everyone was saying. So that's good. Um, final thing. So this is our section of DNA. This would be the specifically the template strand or 
anti-scent strand. If we're being specific, because that's the one, the one that we copy is either you call it the template or you call it the uh, anti-scent strand. Um, yeah, it's, TNA is kind of like, it's like three hairpins together. So there's one hairpin here. There's one hairpin here. This is the most important one because that this one has the anti-codon on. Uh, but there is actually two other sort of like arms, which are also hairpin shape. So it looks a little bit like a clover. That's the idea. Um, <clears throat> so, oh, I think that's where like, <laughs> you you're gonna have asked the question and then like, it's gonna seem like I'm explaining it about a minute later, cause it's getting even more behind. It must be just playing the video. It must be like slightly slowed down. So I think you must be watching it. Not like one second of video isn't the same as one second of real life. Cause it's getting further and further behind for some reason. It must be streaming slightly slowly, which is a bit weird. Um, <clears throat> so in the space below, give the sequence of bases, which will be translated. So what can we, what will we say for that? This seems fine, okay, good, good, good. Maybe it's just, maybe we should, I'm gonna turn off the, video so I can't see it because maybe it's actually just on my end then that it's being weird. <clears throat> yeah, possibly it's just on my screen. I think oh, I'm just watching it on YouTube, but yeah. <clears throat> anyway, yes. So firstly the introns are removed for before translation. So we can get rid of that. And then we just need to copy this, this base. So A would be complementary with T, but we're making um, RNA. So I think a lot of you have put <clears throat> TGT. It would actually be UGU because remember we're making RNA, not DNA. Um, that's not very good U, let me just change that. And then U, G, C, and then U, A, G. Oh, you should probably put that all together. U, G, U, like that. So just three codons that are, well, three codons are produced from three triplets, which are copied. <clears throat> um, yeah, so basically, that's quite a lot to do for just one mark. You had to remove the intron, you had to do the complementary base pair, and then you also had to do turn the uracil, thymine into uracil. So actually quite a few things for that one mark. Um, cool, how is the intron removed? A process called splicing. So removed by splicing down at the splicer zone. Um, <clears throat> cool, so we're gonna have to stop there for today. There's actually a little bit more I wanted to get done, but um, yeah, I think it was actually quite a lot to try and do in an hour. So it was always a bit ambitious, but yeah, you need to be familiar with these tables. You need to be familiar with these three terms, degenerate, universal, and non-overlapping. So just make sure you, you look those up at some point. This is another version of this same table. They both show exactly the same thing. Uh, I actually think this is a nicer format, the circle ones. Um, but yeah, you can use you could use either. And you could be given either in your exam. So just make sure you're happy with both. Um, then, oh, is this frozen? No. And a few more questions. We didn't have time. So. Yeah, just a few things. So we've got more classes coming up uh, in chemistry, physics, uh, maths, as well as biology. 
So um, yeah, set reminders, subscribe to our channel. Um, yeah, obviously, obviously Snap Revise would win in the in the fight. Um, I actually haven't been on Seneca for for a while. Um, I can't remember what the what it looks like. Um, so yeah, a little bit about our courses. So we have a Snap Revise course. It's a subscription based service, and we're offering a discount for that um, today. So I'll I'll show you the actual website in a second, but just sort of an intro on what we what we have so we've got these videos um that you can you can watch and they go through every single spec point like bit by bit breaks it down for you then you've got these smart quizzes and what's really cool about these quizzes is they link to um they link to the bits of the video that you got wrong so say you got a question wrong that will tell you that you don't know this this topic um, and that will send you back to the right bit of the video that you can sort of watch it again and make sure that you understand it so really helpful really useful then there's these condensed revision guides these are kind of like cheat sheets it's the bare minimum everything you need to know in a really condensed form so very helpful then we go through uh pass paper questions breaking down the command words and like what you need to do and like where the marks are rewarded this is really crucial for improving your exam technique which is sort of how you smash an exam one you need to know the content firstly but then that won't if you just know the content you could still easily like cap out at a b grade even if you knew everything and you didn't answer the questions properly like you won't get an a or an a star without having proper exam technique. So that's where that will come in. And then we've just got some extra questions. So after a while, you've kind of seen all of the existing past paper questions for your exam board. So you don't really get the same benefit from doing the same questions again and again. So we've made additional questions that you won't have seen before. So it's like new stuff to look at, to practice. So that's the exam packs. So all very uh, useful things. We're offering 25% off. Make a note of the, the code if you want to try it out. So back to school 21. Um, and I guess I'll quickly just show you the website as well. So you can see, obviously, I mean, you guys all have the internet because you're on this session now. But just to just to show you, so snapprovise.co.uk. This is the courses. Um, oh, I'm not signed in, so I actually won't be able to show you what it looks like from the inside. But um, <clears throat> yeah, basically, well, it's kind of the bits I, I talked you through. And then some extra bits, extra features is we do these web classes. So five times a week, we'll have sessions like just what I've done today, but with much smaller group sizes. So today there was like, I think at one point there's nearly 100 people in the lesson. So I couldn't really answer all of the, the questions, but in our in our group lessons, they're much smaller classes. So you can I can answer basically all of the questions and I can sort of give more individual um, attention. It's just not possible with the YouTube ones, too many people. Um, and yeah, so we do five of those a week. So way more and more um, tailored for you. And then we've also got, you can comment on any video you don't understand. So kind of like, um, cause you can watch these, we do have these videos on, on YouTube. So a lot the videos that we have, you can access them for free on YouTube. But if you, if you watch the videos on our platform and you don't understand something in the video, if you comment beneath it on our platform, a tutor will get back to you with an answer. So really helpful. Um, if you just watch them on YouTube, no one's gonna like, reply to your comment with an answer. It's it's only on the website. So that's that's a big advantage. Uh, and that would be like a, yeah, a subject specific tutor that is getting back to you, um, usually like a teacher. So um, yeah, I think that's a really, really helpful feature. I think that's everything, yeah. So we've got all, no, we're not, we haven't got all exam boards. We've got Edexcel, AQA and OCR. We haven't got the international ones just yet, but if you are in an international exam board, 
you can kind of look at the specs and see which one matches up closest to yours and then pick pick that one. Uh, we don't do computer science yet. I don't know if it's in the pipeline. I think the next ones to come out, if they aren't out already, are psychology, geography, and economics. I think they're the ones that we're trying to get up and running. But maybe computer science at some point. It's, it's one of the fastest growing A-levels, so we probably will um, have a computer science one at some point because a lot more people are doing it now. Um, yeah, I think that is, that is everything um, I wanted to go over. I'll stick around for a couple of minutes in case you've got any questions. Um, you can also al always just email, email Snap Provise. So if you've got um, any questions afterwards, if you go on a website, you can just, there's like a, where you can live chat or you can email. So feel free to do that. Otherwise, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll stick around for another minute or so. Also, I think, because it's going to take a little while for the, the video to catch up. Um, and yeah, if, if not, you like, yeah, well, the session's done. So thanks for joining. Uh, hopefully see you in one of these in the, the future. Um, and yeah, the, we've got another one of these in a month for biology and hopefully see you on our, on our website as well. Are there any other enzymes? Yeah, good question, Nico. I'm actually not sure specifically the process of when DNA condenses, whether there's like enzymes involved in that. Possibly, it's something you'd have to look up um, <laughs> or I could also look it up, but uh, I can't do it right now. Uh, again, if we were in like a, on our actual website, it's something we could actually stop and look up um, during the lesson. Yeah, no, feel free to research it and get back to me next time. I'd be interested to, to hear. When given the mRNA codon, how do you know the tRNA codon? Yes, it's complementary. So if you get given the mRNA, you can then, um, it's just the complementary base to that. And they're both, uh, they're both RNA, so they both have uracil. So that's easy. Uh, the next class, I'm not exactly sure. You'd have to look up at the schedule. It's once a month, but it's not the same week each month. So we kind of like alternate a bit between subjects. Um, cool, right. I think let's let's end there. So yeah, thanks for thanks for joining. Hopefully that was helpful. And yeah, hopefully see you guys in one of these classes in the future or in uh, one on the on the website. Um, cool. All right. Bye guys. Bye.